Welcome back to the Sports by Schmucks podcast. I got a new mic and I love it. Sean, how are you over there? Um, I have an old mic, but it's still fantastic. I am doing quite well. There you go. That's awesome. So um, we took a, a week off last week because who cares? We, you know, it's, it's up to us. We want. Exactly. It's up to us when we take time off from this thing. So um, one of the things that's happened since we've been on was the NFL Combine. And I know you got last time I was on here. I said I hate the combine, and I do, but I hate talking about the combine before it before it happens because there's no point, right? We don't have anything to talk about other than who's going to be there and what they're going to do and what they're not going to do. Who's not going to be throwing or going to be throwing and all this sort of stuff. Exactly. But now we've got numbers, a couple numbers to talk about because things have happened, which makes it actually good to talk about. <laughs> so um, I guess since you're our NFL guy, Sean, The guru, if you may. Well, huh. you you're, an NFL, you're an NFL Just guy, Sean. You're an NFL guy, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, what, what, what was one? Of, what are your, some of your takeaways from the from the combine? Uh, Javian Clowney isn't as strong as I thought he was for being a freak of nature. Yeah, that's I. That I, was shocking. I thought he was going to blow up the combine with every single number he put up, but he. Don't get me wrong. He ran stupidly fast for us. Yeah, four five. Four five three is pretty so, good for the so line. Actually, uh, Lewis. Oh, sorry, not. Um, there's a bunch of guys that ran well. Uh, sorry, Aaron Donald, defensive tackle, 300 pounds from four six eight. That's insane. Well, once you get that in motion, it's probably hard to stop it. That's true, but that's, <laughs> that's a that's a big man running, and, he's, no, I know, and he I bench know. pressed 35 reps. Yeah, he was and, quite possibly the guy who probably put up the most like impressive display. Mm-hmm. Of any defensive lineman outside of you know even over um, Jabani and Connie, yeah. So he, I mean, he probably if everyone on the defensive line, or probably on the defensive like draft board, probably shot up from late first rounder to probably mid to probably tenth into the tens. Yeah, that was that was one of the things like going back to Clowney. That was one of the things that surprised me. I mean, twenty one reps of two hundred twenty five pounds sounds decent enough to like average folk like me and you. <laughs> yeah. But Brady Quinn did 24. Yeah. It's... Of the same weight. So that's a, that's another thing. Like, we can't take too much from the combine. No. You, you got to look at the combine warriors and the numbers they put up and then the lack of production. I, exactly. The combine is just a glorified beat show. I mean, it's... Uh, you you got to go by video. It's, it's, ni- it's nice to know that, like, some of the intangibles that these players have. But, um, like, Johnny Manziel... Yeah, I mean, he he ran a four six eight forty. Uh, that's his official time. He, he and unofficially was like ten, a tenth of a second faster. But yeah, the official time was four six eight. Isn't too bad. It's not too bad. I mean, there's this, there there's some quarterbacks. Um, Connor Shaw was one of them who did not look nearly as fast in college as Johnny Manziel or Garrett um, Carr. Yeah, I was exactly. Not expecting that number, but even then, four six. That's around Cam Newton's time and Andrew Lux and. Those guys you consider as a running quarterback. Yeah, exactly. So that's what that's what I'm saying. Like with Manziel, like Manziel, I don't think his speed is. I don't think he's more, he's as fast as he's agile. The agility yeah. of his movement in the pocket and through defensive lines. That's what gets him the space to actually get you know to actually run. Yeah, I mean, pretty he's much not, every he's drill is top five. Yeah, measurements. And so you know what? As as important it is for a guy like Manziel, to, Manziel to. I'm gonna, I've said it both ways, Manziel and Manziel. Manziel. I know. I don't know why I say it both ways, but I do. Manziel. I'm going to work on that. Anyways, Manziel, he's the type of guy who uses his agility to get around. We just talked about that. Yeah. We, what we need to know is what he didn't do, is, what, is he, didn't, he didn't throw. Yeah, that, but That's no top quarterbacks going to do that nowadays. No. Unless, like, other than um, the kid from UCF. Uh, Blake Bortles? Yeah, that's the one. Thank you. Yeah. I forgot. And he um, probably boosted his draft stock. Well, he was he was he's in the conversation for top pick overall, which uh, I don't know how I feel like that. I still I know I've got the mock draft coming up soon, but want to give uh, us a little teaser? Who's in, maybe who's in your top five right now? Not necessarily who you like, have number one. I think so if, could, if I was like top five, like guys, I think will like are the top rated guys in the draft. Yeah, let's do that. Um, I like Manziel. Okay. I like Clowney. Okay. Uh, I got Mac from Buffalo, who just put up stupid numbers. 
<laughs> he, he uh, I was watching the combine, and Mike Mayock said he picked him over, first overall over Clowney. Oh wow! Okay. Yeah, his his numbers and just the stats and the way he plays, he is a violent guy. He's I'd say a more refined JPP. Like, okay, okay. He's a physical freak, but he can still like get after the quarterback without needing like a year or two to get his motor going. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. Whenever whenever someone says JP, being a with my history with NFL teams, I just think of uh, the quarterback that should not be named. Oh, sorry. He should not be named. Yeah. Um, Sammy Watkins. The yeah. wide receiver from Clemson had a great – he's going to be a good one. Um, I, I don't really know who slides into that fifth spot. Okay. I want to say the offensive lineman from Michigan who blew up the combine, Terry uh, Lay, uh, Lawan, I think. Okay. Um, but it's it's really hard. All three of those offensive linemen are going to be just as good as Eric Fisher and Luke Joko from last year, but they're not going to go as high as this Jeff's a lot deeper. But like we said, the higher end, it doesn't have the super high end guy like that you can't miss as a prospect. That Clowney, I guess, is the closest you can get to that, apparently. But there's going to be like Pro Bowl guys and starters from like all the way up to like mid five second round. So, but like we said, until we see some of these guys on their pro days actually doing their drills, yeah, especially quarterbacks, be, especially quarterbacks, because we a guy like Teddy Bridgewater is supposed to be in the top. He was one of the was debated as one of the top quarterbacks heading into the season. He didn't. He did, I don't think he did anything at the combine, did he? He pulled out of it, didn't he? <laughs> Pretty much. What did he do? Did he do anything? Uh, not that I think he didn't run. I don't think he did the shuttle. Uh, okay, so he just he, he didn't. So he, he did didn't jump. Do much. He did 30, 30 inch jump. Uh, okay, who cares button. how high a quarterback can jump? True. Um, opinion, like his home drill was okay. Me. His twenty yard was pretty fast as well. Okay. Uh, so he, he did okay, but yeah. these he, he's he's built on his accuracy. So without seeing what his like what he can do with his arm, like the kind of throws he can make, quarterbacks these drills don't make don't mean nothing. Exactly. It's it's the wide res- this is the drills for the cornerbacks, wide receiver, like the more skilled position players, and the guys in like put the put the hand to the dirt. That's where they make the money. Mm-hmm. Quarterbacks. They make their money on their pro days. Yeah. But if you go to the combine and throw, like you're doing most of the drills, you can at least sh- you show off more of your, what your profile is. Like uh, Jimmy Garofalo from Eastern Illinois. He's probably went from a fourth rounder to a probably second rounder just because he's not throwing and uh, how he did the senior bowl. He's just, yeah. he's just putting himself out there. Derek Carr, uh, he threw, and I'm pretty sure Derek Carr threw off the head. And Well... Sorry. No, no, keep going. If you had one more point. And now he's going to be up near the top. They're, like, they're talking about him in the top ten picks just because of what he's been doing and the fact that teams are quarterback needy. Like, there's at least four or five quarterbacks that could go in the top ten. Don't know if all of them deserve to be up there, but it could be there. But it's also based on teams' needs of what they actually want to draft. Yes. So that's why that's maybe why some maybe a quarterback will that maybe won't be that was supposed to be in the top ten falls or vice versa. But that happens every draft. Of course. Well, I think, I we think don't a quarterback spend, will be the top pick of the draft. Uh, we don't want to spend too much time on the combine yeah. because, like we said, it's 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 important, but it's not the most important workout they're gonna have over the summer. Um, one last story from the combine, which I found hilarious. Oh God, this should be one of um, our uh, fails of the week. Yeah, but I forgot about it until just now as we were talking about the combine. So um, when we talked about Bridgewater not participating. Or it's um, San Diego State running back uh, Adam Muema, if I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not. Probably not. That's okay. Yeah, whatever. He, he, he walked out, so he deserves it. Sorry, continue. Yeah. Well, you know what? I, I'm i not going to bash him for his faith of walking out of the of the, dra- of the combine because God told him he would play for the Seahawks if he misses workouts. <laughs> but... I don't want to bash him for his his faith, but that just seems that's just really strange. That's dumb. I mean, that's just dumb. You, you walk out the biggest. That's like me going to the biggest job interview in my life, getting three quarters of the way through. Like, ah, okay, I'm done. I'll see you later. Yeah, like and like, if we don't, it just and even not so much about you know that just says something about him. Like, is he going to do like just all of a sudden Up one day? Yeah, one day is like, oh well, God told me to to retire at 25 and go on a mission, which is great humanitarian work. Don't get me wrong about that, but a team 
who you're looking who's looking to get you know to draft you, and that's how you leave. I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, teams are aware of why he left. So, I mean that that's got to do something. That's got to be a note in the in in, in the draft book. So, like if you if you're a de- de- uh, sorry, sounded like uh, Porky Pig there for a second. If you sound if you're debating between two running backs between uh, Muema and, and another one in a late with a late round pick or like a, you know something like you know in that range of a pick, you're not gonna go with the guy that might flake out on you. Exactly. You're gonna want, you're gonna go to the guy who's like, okay, well this guy has been working and he went to the combine he did all this stuff he's committed to this i don't know how how much how committed this guy is how this Muama guy is to a team that he'll come on to yeah that's just my takeaway from it like i said nothing against his faith it just kind of shows it could show that he might just bail and did you hear that his friends didn't find him for three days after and they, they, they found was, him he, in an airport and he was wearing the same hilarious he was wearing his workout clothes wasn't he that's what i heard i think that's what i saw yeah. See, that's just that's weird. That that that's that that's a red flag if I'm a if I'm, not, if I'm an NFL GM. Yeah. Also, I just saw this story. To, sorry to kind of interrupt you. Oh no problem. Uh, this is why we're live, folks. We're live. Um, live. Well, I'm just reading this on. Uh, we're live for tape. Yeah. Reading this on Sports Illustrated's website. Um, okay. That the NFL instead of having kicks come from the three yard line, they're thinking about moving back to the twenty five yard line for an extra point attempt. So each uh, extra point would be a forty two yard attempt. It's something. I mean, it'll be interesting. What do you think about that? It'll be interesting in places like um, Denver, like Pittsburgh, Chicago, <laughs> Denver. Those, those like crazy winds. Exactly. Buffalo. Uh, yeah. Well, that's the one thing I was thinking of right away. Is like, how's that going to work at the Ralph? We've seen um, players, you know, uh, Lin, like players like Lindell have a four, thirty-nine yard kick that just looks like it's going dead straight right down the middle, and then the wind picks up and blows it ten yards right. Yep. So I think it's I think it's not going to be as big of a deal early in the season, but when you get into games in November, December, winter, yeah, snow on the ground, the winter, snow on the ground, um, it's not just going to be a gimme anymore. I like you know I like this. It, it gives instead of taking it out, make kickers. Like, this will just show the elite kickers on the guys who should be kicking for the XFL. It'll be, it's going <laughs> to be pretty. In, it's going to be pretty interesting to see if more teams go for two then. Yeah, I because it, I could see makes, more teams going for two if they don't have a reliable kicker all the time. Yeah, look at the Cowboys. <laughs> exactly. Like if you can't say, well, I'm going to get you this one point every time. Why not go for two? I think it could. I think it, I think it, I like it. I think it would, it's going to be good. Change the game. For, I think it changes the game for better. Yes, it's a, it's a it's a positive change. I agree with you on that. Yeah, that's if it does go through, which I hope it does. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Well, with the NFL, you know, it probably won't because it's a good idea. <laughs> Touche, sir. So we're now joined. Um, we actually have Josh back with us again after his very, very strong debut in his first podcast. He joins us as we switch topics in perfect timing. As we talk about NFL free agency coming straight from the combine, you don't mind missing talking about the combine, do you? Uh, that's all right. Don't worry about it. I know that's uh, Sean's forte. So yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's perfect because I just made up numbers. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, NFL free agency. Sean, you wrote the preview. Um, it came out I think probably last week for the offensive side, offensive. Uh, free agents that are out there. Uh, we've seen some sign already. Macklin uh, re-signed for a year with the Eagles. Riley Cooper. With the Eagles. A, with the Eagles with a five-year deal. And Jimmy Graham got franchise tag. Um, so I guess... Since he, gets, he, he gets, well, transition tag. Yeah, what well, yeah, whatever you call it. Non-exclusive franchise or whatever it is. All these crazy tags. Yeah, it's just stupid. I, I It's pretty much like the... if, if For those who, who are listening, that's not... NFL inclined. It's like in the NHL's restricted free agency system, where if you sign him, you have to give picks to the team, to the, your, to the old team. Yes. Pretty much, yeah. I mean, no, it's pretty much exactly, it's exactly like that. Yeah. Um, so, the, I guess the, the, the most substantial number-wise signing right now has been uh, Riley Cooper to the Eagles. Five years, 25? Exactly. Um... I think it's a little bit of an overpay, but uh, as we were talking about uh, off podcast, I guess you'd be. Yeah, before. before. Um, his chemistry with Foles, when he, when Foles became the full-time starter, when Vic got hurt, it really, they clicked. So I think it's an overpay just because there's, there's not enough, uh, I'm not sure what the word is. There's not there's enough. Not, 
It's, it's it's a small sample size. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, it was a great point that I brought up off off podcast for you to bring yeah. up. Thanks. It's a, I appreciate it. I'll give you yeah. full credit for that one. But yeah, it's a small sample size for what they've done so far. But what they've done so far has been pretty good. So, um, especially if they get Macklin back, it probably won't give him a, a bigger role in the offense. But you have Macklin back, and he's a he's a weapon. That's uh, Percy Harvin has like type of weapon that's coming back to the Eagles offense that they didn't have last season and that was a pretty damn explosive offense so yeah. they, their offense can be scary yeah, just to add to that Sean uh, well I guess not to add to it but to go against it San Fran actually and Anquan Bolden on a two year deal two year, yep. worth uh, what was it 12 million 12 yeah, uh, yeah I think yeah. 8 guaranteed yeah so uh, not bad that's a, yeah. I, 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 that's, he, that's, he, that's a good number for him. He was a good fit in San Francisco, too. And that would probably be the contract to end his career. Because he's, he's getting up there. Or, I don't know if end his career, but as like a big-time like premier wide receiver. No, this will probably be his last contract for that. Yeah, because that will give him at least a 14. Because he's, what, 12-year veteran right now? So, uh, somewhere in that area. So uh, another big story, at least for me, because it affects me the most, was – uh, the announcement that the Bills will not apply the franchise tag to Jarius Bird. Uh, they offered him a contract that would have made him the highest paid safety in the NFL, but he turned it down. So it's it's simply a case of him just not wanting to play in the Bilo, right? Pretty much. That's, that's exactly it. He just doesn't want to play for Buffalo. If you get the most money possible for safety in the league and you turn it down, you hate wherever you're playing, so that's that's it. Which sucks. Cause I love I, I love me some Jarius Bird. <laughs> you are a good Bills fan. No, Look I mean that. he he is he he was the the bright spot in the in a lackluster secondary for a while. Oh no, for sure for well, a long time. More. Yeah. No, but be- I'm saying be- before, before for, him, yeah. for his like for over the course of his career. I mean, he, ah, just always. With the Buffalo defense, we, like we were talk, we talked about this a bit before we started recording as well. I brought up, you know, Buffalo has lost Dante Whitner to this. They've lost on on the offensive side of the ball. They had to trade Marshawn Lynch because he didn't want to play in Buffalo. Uh, Paz Lesney. You, you, Paz Lesney. You mentioned Travis Henry, Willis yeah. McGahey. There's so many talented players that have left this franchise because they don't want to play in Buffalo. Now. It gets me thinking: Is it the organization or the city? City. It's the city, because then if it's the city, as much as I'm a Bills fan, this franchise won't be able to survive in Buffalo if the players keep leaving. Well, it's kind of like a Edmonton Oilers situation, or Calgary Flames. You're in the middle, of nowhere. You have all these other cities around you that are much yeah, let's bigger. Not talk, let's not go well, to the middle them, of nowhere until you live where I live. <laughs> Just touche. <laughs> but. Well, if you have Vancouver just down the road a little bit, and then you have Vancouver's I, not just down the road a little bit. <laughs> true. Well, I'm, well, for from somebody flying who's going to like live there permanently for at least okay. the next three four years, that's not that far away. Okay, is what I mean. Like, if why why go to the Buffalo Bills when the Giants are just down the road? Okay, well, I see. Yeah. What, I see your point. I see your point. But okay, so. Where where do you think he'll sign then? Jerry's Bird? Yeah. Well, you have to read my defensive article to find out. There you go. That's a, that's what we call a teaser. And we don't want to get too question. much into the offense stuff. Oh, just to answer your question, though. Just no, me. don't answer the question. We're going to leave them hanging. Okay. We're going to go back to the offensive side because I forgot we were focusing on the offensive side. I just got too fed up with Jerry's Bird. I had to get it out. Rage over. <sighs> Sorry. It happens. Uh... Quarterbacks, weak, weak free agent class. Extremely. Josh, I'm oh, sorry, uh, Michael Vick and Josh McCallan are probably the big names out there, which is kind of sad. So uh, it's a backup. It's a backup class. Uh, pretty much. Well, Matt sorry. Castle's all right. I mean, Chad Henney, Flynn. There's a bunch of like spot starters. But nothing. The only one with potential is Josh Freeman, and I'm not getting to that. That's a that's a whole bag of Jerry's bird anger right there. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you, you brought up you brought up Castle. I mean, Cat, like you're right. Castle has shown that he can win in the league when he was with the Patriots. But is that? Do you think that's more the Patriots system, or do you think that was Castle's talent, Josh? Um, 
He did win with the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, he, he, he won with the Chiefs a bit as well. Like, he did decent with the Chiefs. I think it's just the fact, like, you look, you look at the Vikings, no offense, it's just there's no... There's nobody really there to, to throw it, like, with the loss of Chris Carvin. Cordell Patterson, Greg Yeah, Jennings, but that was before this year. Tight ends. Jennings did nothing this year. Because he had no quarterbacks throwing to him. Exactly, so that's Matt Castle. Exactly, so oh, well, Matt Castle's Yeah, Castle was hurt at some point, then they brought in Freeman. They have, there was such a huge uh, quarterback controversy within Minnesota that when you can't have one guy there – to stick to a game plan and run that plan and have the offense get used to him, that's why nobody's going to, you know, guys like Greg Jennings aren't going to do anything. Yeah, I know that. Greg Jennings screwed me over. In, well, one of the players, one of the things that screwed me over in fantasy. A lot of things screwed me over in fantasy football this <laughs> all year. All the things screwed you over in fantasy. <laughs> yeah, all the things. My brain screwed me over in fantasy football this year. Um, but I do, I, I agree with you in Cord- um, Cordell Patterson. I think he's going to be a fantastic talent. And yeah. whoever stumbles into the Vikings quarterback uh, situation, We'll have that for that'll Sorry, Josh, we interrupted you when we jumped on with the castle yeah. stuff. Yeah, no that would be a high round pick right there for uh, the Vikings. The yeah, I know, I know top ten, in my opinion, you have Mike Vick, Matt Castle, Josh Freeman, Josh McCown, uh, Henny, you guys Flynn. remember guys like Chris Jackson, Flynn, Sean Hill from Detroit, um, who won a couple games this season, taking over um, from Stafford there. Derek Anderson, He's not the greatest. Kellen Clemens is also there of free agency. Rex Grossman, Charlie uh, Whitehurst, Colt McCoy. <laughs> Charlie Whitehurst. <laughs> uh, well, Jimmy Clausen, David Gard, John Kittner. He's just wonder. Yeah, these guys are yeah. all backups. The, but, the only one that has even slight potential of being a starter is Vic. Yeah. And that would and, depend on the situation. And that depends where he goes. I, as I said in my article, the three teams I think might, might give him a shot would be the Raiders, the Bills, or Browns. Uh, the Bills, I think he has the chance because EJ Manuel is being hurt, and now you have two injury prone quarterbacks. Maybe one of them can stay healthy and do something. Uh, the Raiders, with him control prior, would be pretty good. Once again, kind of the same situation with EJ Manuel. Have you and seen Cleveland, injury history? Yeah, and the Cleveland Browns, uh, they have no one. See, I don't think I don't I don't think I don't think I like. It makes sense for Vic to go there for Vic. I don't think it makes sense for the Cleveland, for the Browns to sign Vic. Not really. They need to go after. They need a young guy. They need someone who can. They need to roll the dice on someone. And it's Water Manziel, yeah. They need to get a young quarterback. Exactly. They need. They need the guy. They tried to get the guy with a 29 year old rookie two years ago. Oh. Yeah. I mean, that's they could say, hey, they could say they brought in a. They could, they, could, they could say they brought in a rookie quarterback, but. <laughs> okay. Um, next position, I guess running backs. Um, I guess highlighted by uh, Darren McFadden. And uh, Maurice Jones drew. Yeah, I think Mojo could help as like a a one B running back somewhere. I don't think he's gonna be able to carry the load anymore. That's just me personally. Yeah, uh, as I said, my I, I think the uh, the Browns got to cut like a ton of cap room, and they need they need an, another runner there. So he, I think he'd be a good option there. Or if the tit- if the Titans do cut Chris Johnson because he's owed a lot of money. Yeah, he he'd be good to go there and hurt his old team, because <laughs> and you'd have to actually a shot at the playoffs there as long as Jake Locker can get his shit together and start yeah. staying healthy Play. and winning. Now I see, I see that you have uh, Darren McFadden heading the Cardinals. Um, that could be a good fit. I think Darren McFadden still has a lot of potential in this league. I know he's been injured, yeah. But if you have when he's not injured, he is one of the most dynamic running backs in the league. Yeah, I think keeping him with Ellington if. You can be, make him as the like one B, as you said, to like Mojo, to keep him to keep his legs fresh or not broken, it would probably be a good option. And Ellington's gonna be a, like a, a really good running back, so having that good change of pace, physical but fast type runner, might give the Cardinals an actual shot at that division, like yeah. winning that division. Uh, I, yeah, with I, that I, defense, I said it last. Yeah. I said it last year, and it almost came true. You did. I'm really high on the Cardinals. You're just really high. Um, <laughs> so, do you have anything to add for running backs, Josh? Uh, sorry. Do you have anything to add about for like with running backs? Anyone that you want that you say, hey, look at this guy who's a free agent. Uh, to be honest, not not really many. Of the, again, what we've seen or what we just you know spoke about with well, having. Go ahead, Sean. I'll, I'll I'll throw a couple names for you. See what you guys may think. Mo- Notion Moreno. 
Oh yeah, no Sean. Um, Cause that's 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 another good one B option. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, no, I I I like no Sean Moreno. Or Ben Tate's out there as well. Like Ben Blunt, Tate. Ben Blunt. Tate's gonna get paid. Ben yeah. Tate, yeah. Ben Tate's gonna get the. Uh, I think Ben Tate's gonna be one of the most highly paid um, coming up this season for sure. There's there's a lot of good one B running backs this year. There's no big like. This is your guy. He's your bell cow. You can run him to the ground. So I think someone's gonna sign. I think someone's gonna sign Tate to be that guy though. Who? I don't know who. I just think someone will. I think it's just. I just think I see some. I see some team that Jets. see that saw maybe that saw him how he took over for Foster when he was hurt. Yeah. And he was able to. He was able to carry the majority of the offense. Then I can see them. Even when Foster came team, back, you they, even, yeah. they pretty much split. Yeah, I can, I can see. I could see a team wanting to say, "Look, I'm, we're going to give you, we're going to pay you, we're going to make you a number one back, we're going to make you our feature back," and he's going to jump at it because that's if, if I'm in a, if I'm in NFL running back, that's what I want. All right, one more question then before we go on for Max. Like Garrett Blunt, do you think he resigns in New England? Uh, no, I think he's done. He's done there. Brett, I see. I th- I like I've as someone who sees New England twice a year. Uh, painfully, um, I think Belichick's able to get so much out of their players that I think it'd be smart for him to stay there. Agreed. Maybe even maybe just, maybe sign like a one year, two year deal. Get your get the clout behind your name again, like after that rookie season in Tampa that you know all about. Yeah, and then go back out there and test the market again. Like he showed, like you saw, he showed flashes of what he could do on kick returns, and. Uh, Taking over for injuries, and in the playoffs, yeah. he, just, he was taking over the running game, like the last couple well, of years of the year. I think Ridley, he resigns there. I think I think they put Ridley on the trade block. Well, Ridley can't hang on to the football, so that's why put, that's yeah. why they keep him here. That's why I think they would want to keep him is because he can't hang on. He can't hold on to the ball. Yeah. But Ridley can't hold on to the ball. So I think it's smart if New England signs him, maybe a one or two year deal, beneficial for both for both. And then if Blunt proves himself, he can go after a big contract somewhere. Yeah. Maybe not a big contract, but a. A, a, still, a starter, contract. A starter scale contract. Exactly, okay. a starter scale. Yeah. Uh, two more guys I want to add in. Donald Brown, Minneapolis. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he'll resign there. Yeah, I, I, from what I've read, uh, Indianapolis is probably going to try and match the offer uh, that he gets. But they're going to give him a pretty competitive offer. And then uh, the other guys, Rashad Jennings. Yep. Um, who was uh, from Jacksonville as well. Yep. I think. He, I think. I don't know if he'll resign. I think Jacksonville will want him over Maurice Jones too. A little younger, a little harder runner. Now, yeah. uh, less less try the tires. I think Jackson will probably be a good spot for him to go back to because he'll yeah. be the starter there. They'll probably draft someone, probably the fourth or fifth round to kind of replace Maurice Jones true if they yeah. resign Jennings. For sure. All right, so let's 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 move on from running backs. Even though I kind of wanted to talk, even though it's funny to see Trent Richardson, you know, almost pushed aside in what Indianapolis. A bust. Exactly. <laughs> Um, anyways, let's go to tight ends because we kind of talked about wide receivers already. Um, with tight ends, the biggest one is Jimmy Graham, obviously. Actually, who's... top two are pretty much off the market at this point. Oh yeah, Pitty resigned too, didn't he? Yeah. He just he resigned a couple days ago. So really, nothing to talk about in tight ends. Oh, well, there's a couple of good ones out there. You got your Michael Finley. If you can get back healthy, that's a pretty good weapon. Yeah, but not like not in the same. I wouldn't say in the same level as Pitt or No, he's, or he's, definitely he's, Grant. he's a number he's a number two kind of like tight end, I guess I'd say. Like he's mm-hmm. not that elite starter, but he can still well he was at one point for yeah. only one year, but he's had injury problems since then. Yes. Uh yeah, there's tons of guys. Fred Davis is available, Scott Schindler, Brandon Pettigrew, Dustin Keller, um Brandon Myers. Yeah. But see there some of these players like Pettigrew and um Fred Davis if I'm them I don't leave my team. Like well, I, I think Brandon, I think Pettigrew's getting pushed out of the Detroit because of uh, Joseph Fourier. Yeah. Okay. And then Keller, he's not going. I, well, he might resign with Miami. I, I'm not sure about him. He's the one wild card because he got injured so early. So he might come back just to kind of maybe prove himself to Miami that hey, like you didn't waste your time and money on me this one year. Yeah. So, I don't know. I just, I, I just see didn't does hasn't Fred Davis and. Oh wait, which, we're talking about Fred Davis in Washington, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, because I get Fred Davis. I get da- all these. So many Davises, I get confused. Um, 
I thought I thought Fred Davis liked playing with RG three. And isn't this isn't the Redskins now just about keeping RG three happy? Yeah, but Jordan Reed came on to kind of take over Fred Davis and had Fred Davis had his role just completely drop off the map. Yeah. All right. Shows what I know. That's why <laughs> that's why I didn't terribly in fantasy football because I don't pay attention to stuff like that. But for Jermichael Finley though, that's the one thing I think he's gonna he's I think he's gonna go to one of the New York teams. So I think he might either sign with your your uh, Buffalo Bills or the Jets or the Giants because both all three of those teams really need a tight end that's a pass catcher. Yeah. Okay, I, I haven't really looked into it, and that might be putting you guys on the spot. But what have you like? I might have forgotten already. Scott Chandler, he is a free agent this year, right? Yeah. Is, is he? Did he resign or is he? Is he, is he testing? No, he's testing free agency. Yeah. Okay. What a bum. Did the same thing to me and Madden. Um. <laughs> anyways, uh, nobody wants. I've, Nobody wants to play in the armpit of America. It's just... <laughs> Sorry, buddy. That's true. Why do, then why do people go to America's dong in Florida? Because it's the dong, man. People love the dong. <laughs> 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 what does this become? Oh, okay. Uh, I don't really want to talk about offensive line, Sean. Do you guys want to? Uh, no, you guys probably won't know really anything too much about them. Uh, the big resign is that Alice Mack, uh, the Browns have resigned him. Okay. Uh, it was either him or probably Tampa, who Jeff Tedford was his old coach. So it was probably one of those two teams. Okay. Um, other than that, Brandon Albert's probably going to go to Miami. They're probably going to throw a boatload of money off him because of yeah. Incognito and Richie Martin. Or sorry. Yeah. Not Richie Martin. Richie Incognito and Jonathan Martin. Like, yeah. their offensive line is being destroyed. Uh, Eugene Monroe will probably go back to Baltimore because they will let Oler go. So it, it, there's a bunch of good – there's a good, good a bunch of offensive linemen. But – uh, you guys won't really care about too much about them, so the guys in the trenches. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Something I learned, Sean, focuses very much on in Madden online leagues. <laughs> Building his offensive line. Oh yeah, you guys had a, you guys had a Madden league together, didn't you? Yeah. So who ended up uh, who ended up winning the Super Bowl between you two? <laughs> uh, Sean won the first one. Okay. <laughs> the second, second one. Second one. Yeah. Run, Josh Ron Holt, yeah. Go on him. Oh, so this, this, but the Smith family continue, can, had their domination over you, right, John? Yeah, you went in PS4 version. Must oh, yeah? Out it out. Well, then again, I also bought the PlayStation version, played it once. I thought, eh. I played I played it on Xbox, too, so. I think you're just scared. Not, no, I'm not scared. <laughs> Speaking of being scared, this is a terrible transition, but the initial free, uh, sorry, their trade deadline's coming up. That's a terrible transition. I know it's a terrible transition. That's on the no, post. No, oh. let's no, no. Okay, whatever. You already did it. That's just terrible. Oh, no, no. Or it's your job, buddy. Um, yeah. So with that being said, um, <laughs> <laughs> what what potential you know, trades might happen coming this week? Uh, coming, what, Tuesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Oh, jeez. What, what move do you think might happen? Because I know the big ones already happened with Ryan Miller being moved to St. Louis. I think, it's gonna, I think the attention is going to stay in Buffalo. Um, there's already rumors. I, uh, sorry, uh, they've already admitted that everybody pretty much on their roster is on the block, so anyone can go, including the guys they got back in the trade for Ryan Miller, which was uh, Yaroslav Halak and Chris Stewart. They've already gone. They just want to stockpile as many picks. prospects and picks as they possibly can, because they know they're not going to win right now. So I see if anything's going to happen, it's going to come out of Buffalo. They've, uh, there's rumors of. Uh, Chris Stewart being um, heading to Ottawa potentially, um, but pretty much everybody in Ottawa in Buffalo is has a uh, for sale sign on them right now. Okay, what about the hometown Maple Leafs? Any, they're not anything going with them? They're not going to do anything. They're not going to do anything. The, the only thing that they want to try and do, from what I've seen, is they're looking at trying to get some kind of defensive value back for Nikolai Kuhlman. Um but I mean, for a guy that's veteran, he's an unrestricted free agent at the end of the season. It's a risk for teams to trade some actual defensive value back to the Leafs for a guy that's offensive production has dropped right off the fucking right off, you know, the the actual face of the earth. yeah face of the earth and and you know somebody that went from scoring twenty goals in a season who can't even put up eight 
you know, and you just you just drop a, a, a substantial amount, and it's a it's a huge risk for teams to to take on him. But Kuhlman's always been fairly 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 reliable defensively. It's like he's not the best defensive forward, but he's accountable in his own zone for the most part. Yeah. Which is, which adds a nice benefit if you're not if you're at least you're not going to score goals. Like granted, his contract is is geared to someone who scores goals, which he does. He isn't doing right now. Exactly. But, yeah. Something that they were looking at even was uh, came up Nikolai Kuhlman for Michael Grabner. From, okay. From uh, the Islanders, and um, there's not a huge difference in the talent. Um, it's Grabner's more of a is, is actually a better penalty killer than than Kuhlman is, but as far as it, you know, as far as it goes, it's essentially the same the same type of player. It doesn't really fit with what Toronto needs to do or wants to do. I think the biggest acquisition for Toronto is going to be Dave Boland back in the lineup when he actually finally comes back. Yeah. I, I think I think they're fine with the roster, and once Boland comes back, he'll be able to provide. I mean, they were they were very very they were good on the penalty. I want to say very very good. They were good on the penalty kill when Boland was in the lineup before uh, the game against Vancouver when he got his uh, ankle Achilles severed, I believe it was, when he by the skate. I think it was his Achilles. Yeah. Um, they were they were they were pretty solid for the, for the most part defensively with Boland in the lineup, especially in the faceoff circle. He was good in the faceoff, so. I think when he comes back, it'll, it'll be a nice boost to the team. So I don't, I don't think they're gonna like. I think we agreed that they're not gonna um, do anything. And Sean mentioned before we were recording that Garner's on the block, but Garner is always on the block. Yeah, he's been on the block ever since Kyle Carlisle got there. Yeah. Well, there were another another deal that they were looking at was uh, it was actually with Buffalo, and it was Gardner, Carrick, and a third round pick for Tyler Myers. Um, I like that. I just I, I I like Tyler Myers. I had he, I just. What, how are you gonna pay Franson? How are you gonna pay Riley? Yeah. When you when you because Myers is locked up for what three or four more years? Something some he, he he signed the contract and good for him when he did, when he was at his peak and he's just kind of tailed off since then. And when you're already paying um, Fanuff what seven seven and a half with yeah. his new deal when that kicks in, how are you gonna pay Franson? Who's gonna want? Well, if he, he's going to want the money, the same money he wanted last year, but he has I don't think he's played well enough to get it. Yeah. Um, other ones, they're even talking like Gardner, Reimer, and a first-round pick for this draft going to Calgary for Mark Giordano and Kari Ramo. Um, Kuhlman for a second-round pick. Um, or, sorry, second to a fourth-round pick. There's there's a, there's a bunch of, of rumors that fly around. So again, another technical dropout. The fun of having uh, a podcast over Skype. Um, Skype, get you know, step your game up. Um, we were talking about the potential or rumor of a Evander Kane and Bogosian trade to the <clears throat> excuse me Senators for Spezza, Cowan, and Anderson. So what does that leave for Ottawa and go, go, uh, net? Just, just Leonard. Uh, well, yeah, you would have Robin Leonard, um, which I mean. He's he won a bunch of games. He's very similar to uh, Markstrom in Florida when he was there. That first season that he played there, the first two seasons where he was playing, you know, a couple games a season, he was actually performing really well. And then they kind of just it ended up, you know, they they ended up bringing in uh, who's down there in Florida now. Tim Thomas. No, no, Tim Thomas in New, uh, is in New York. Hmm. No. I thought Tim Thomas was in Florida. He's he, just in Florida. Made, he just made a ridiculous yeah. save when he fell down. Hey, he is in Florida. Yeah, he was, I was thinking he was on the Islanders. Oh, you're thinking of Baca, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, like, for, for Markstrom, like, they're, they're young goalies, so you can't really tell, you know, how well they're going to do, you know, by looking at them when they're at a young age. Like, guys like Carey Price and, you know, Flurry. Those guys, yeah, you're going to be able to tell, but especially with European goalies, it's it's difficult to to tell. Well, one of the one of the rumors that I that I was that kind of came up once the Olympics ended was the whole Saint Louis thing. You know, sort of him asking for a trade when he wasn't named to Team Canada. No. So, do you think that they're going to follow through with that? And do you think he's going to follow through with that trade request once now that he's back from the Olympics and still perform, playing very well for Tampa Bay? No, he's going to stay there. Yeah. 
Uh, Callahan, do you think he's going? The Rangers say he's going. He's going. I don't think he will. I don't think there's enough time or cap space for someone to pick him up. No, uh, to be 100% honest, the, the biggest deals happen always before the trade deadline. Yeah. You know, come Wednesday, you're going to see a lot of... And, and Small it's, trades. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of deals where you're going to see guys like Kuhlman get moved for a third-round pick or a fourth-round pick. Like, you're going to... It's Trade Center on TSN, unfortunately, it's not what it used to be, where it was like, shit, I want to call in sick for work today because I don't actually want to watch this. Now it's like, okay, I don't care. 16 trades, you know, 46 draft picks included. Nobody cares. Um, it's, they're, not, they're not going to have on right to save it with the blog this year either. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, to be honest with you, I'm probably going to end up watching Sportsnet. Um as opposed to TSN on this one, but I'll also be at work for the better half of the day. I'll probably listen to Tim and Sid. Yeah, that was going to be what I said. <laughs> right, Tim and Sid will be good as well, yeah. That but, makes um, up for like a J. I don't think anything's going to happen. I think, and I think the whole all the Kessler stuff, that's going to be nothing either. Yeah, no, Kessler I, will probably stay there in Vancouver I, as well. I agree, I agree with you what you said, Sean. All the biggest deals with the big, with the big players, they can only happen in the summer when they have time to to work things out and actually address it properly as opposed to trying to rush something together before 3 o'clock on Wednesday. Yep. I agree. You can't make a blockbuster trade under the gun. You need you need time to work those things out. Yeah. yeah. The, the biggest thing is, especially when you have guys that are that are going to be free agents in the offseason and, and whatnot, it's GMs would rather wait. The, there's the guys that are going to take London players, you know, for the playoffs, whatever, and they're unrestricted free agents. Who cares? They're lot, you know, they lose them, whatever. Um, but teams that look for, you know, substantial value in players like the St. Louis deal with Ryan Miller. You know what, Miller? Did he like the city of Buffalo? He says he did. <laughs> you know, no way like does anybody like the city of Buffalo? Not I really. Do. He might be the exception. No, you don't. Other than yourself, Brett. Oh, I think I think it's just because they host the host the Bills. That's that's about it. If, the, yeah. if they're out of Buffalo, I don't think I'd care. Um, but yeah. Hashtag Buffalo Bisons. Hashtag <laughs> <laughs> Buffalo Bisons. Yeah. Um, but there's there's more time with the free agency portion of it to say, hey, you know what these are the teams that are interested in you, you know, and, and GMs will, will say to those players, I think they have a, if they have a strong enough relationship and it's a higher value player. They'll say, what team are you more likely to resign with? Because at the same time that they want to get a deal done, they don't want to burn bridges with other GMs in the league mm-hmm. for the sake of having to make a deal in the future. Um, because as an example, if Ryan or say for instance, Ryan Miller does not sign in St. Louis at the end of the season. St. Louis now gave up Yaroslav Halak. You know, Anthony Stewart was a first-round pick and a third-round pick, I think, was in that deal. Yeah, one of them is, one of them is conditional on, a, on whether or not Miller resigns. Yeah. So if Miller doesn't resign, they get the pick. Oh, sorry, the pick, they, they get the pick back. Um, but just things like that, like if, if Miller, you know, doesn't resign, St. Louis goes to and says, well, Next time I, I'm going to go make a deal with Buffalo. Do I really want to? Because this is what happened last time. Well, let's say let's say Miller doesn't resign, but the Blues win the Cup. Do they care as much about losing a goalie like Halak? No, because they have Brian Elliott. This is Sorry, what was that? They have Brian Elliott. Yeah, exactly. This is this is the issue with St. Louis is they've traded away a good goalie and now they've gotten a great goalie. So now they have a great goalie and a really good goalie. And uh, you know what? Brian Elliott might be somebody that's on the market come Wednesday. You don't know. W- with with bringing in Ryan Miller, who can play 50 games or 60 games in a season, is there a need for Brian Elliott still? Um, other than injury back, other than injury insurance, no. Yeah. So, you know, look at getting maybe value back for him. Uh, there's the the. So, I will not be surprised if St. Louis is in the in the Stanley Cup Finals this season. Neither would I. Their defense is, is phenomenal. They have one of the youngest defenses and one of the most skilled and talented ones with Pietrangelo, Shattenkirk, you know, those guys. And it's uh, Even Bowmeister's been playing well there. Yeah. 
So, so I guess we can maybe look at this after the trade deadline. But going into it, who is your who? Let's let's just go conference finals right now for each of it for each, for both conferences. Who is your conference finalist? So who's, who's in the Western Conference Final? Who's in the Eastern Conference Final? Clear it up that way. Ooh. Ooh. They're on the spot right there. Um. Like well, the final, I'll, like the final, and then okay. Just, just, just the two teams in each conference final. Just so it's not, it's Final Four. We're getting close to the basketball Final Four, so let's talk about hockey Final Four. Oh, um, I can't wait. See, that's how you do. A, that's how you do a segue, Sean. <laughs> yeah. Um. Um, the see, I, the I'm, seedings? I'm leaning toward, I don't think anyone's going to match Pittsburgh in the Metropolitan, so I think they're going to be one of the conference finalists. Because I'm pretty sure you have to play your the division now. So I think I'm going to go, I'm going to give Boston the nod because I think Ross is going to carry them. I think it's going to be Boston-Pittsburgh again in the conference final, unfortunately. I would rather something different. And... See, that, that St. Louis-Chicago series that will probably happen in the Central Division is going to be amazing. I think that's going to be the best series. in the, I think whoever wins that series will win the Cup. So I think it's going to be St. Louis and I'm going to say Los Angeles because they've been coming on lately, coming on at the right time in the Western well, Conference Final. Uh, I'm going to say St. Louis. <laughs> Damn. Um I'm going to look at the divisions now I think about it. Is what you just I can jump in. I have my picks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I got L.A. Okay. I think L.A. is going to take over Anaheim. I just got that feeling they're just going to skip the get, roll again. I don't think L.A. is going to catch Anaheim in the in the division race because oh, Anaheim's got that locked that. up. Well, not locked up, but locked up from L.A. Let's talk about playoffs. Yeah. Okay. Oh, playoffs. playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> and... Oh, that, is, that, is a, that is a legal thing that anytime someone says playoffs on a sports yeah, show, they have to do more impression. I think Chicago. Chicago. Okay. The That's fair. Blackhawks. That's fair. <laughs> and then I have Pittsburgh and the Metropolitan because I don't see Philly or the Rangers even getting close to touching them. Uh, maybe if Washington sneaks in there, maybe they can do something. Nope. Well, they're a streaky team. If they get hot, they can do something. Detroit, I don't think can do anything. Um, and then because really down to Boston, Montreal, or Toronto, or maybe even Tampa. I don't know. It's hard to say how the event is. Uh, how do you forget like Detroit? Uh, Detroit's in that division. No, I know. I I I, I, uh, I just don't think Detroit will have the firepower, the the legs. I don't. I I'm very concerned about Zetterberg's back injury. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. true. But I, I, then Boston, it's. Uh, Boston's probably the, the cream of the crop of the Atlantic, but Montreal, Tampa, and Toronto are right there. No, Toronto's not, Toronto's not there. Well, they're not there, but they're not far out from me. And like, you got to remember last season. You can look at last season as well. Like, Toronto's Boston. the only team that took Boston past. You know, it, it actually gave Boston a struggle in the playoffs. So that was a that's a that's a different Toronto team. Well, I know that I know that I know they have a lot of the same cast, but they are not playing anywhere near the level they were playing last year. Yeah, but anything in ha- it's still what a month and a half out. A it is still a month and a half out. But I, I, as much as I want it to happen, I, if they go into Boston for a deciding game, that's going to be in the back of their heads no matter what. What if it's Boston Montreal in series one or two? Or Boston and Tampa. There's a lot of options. They try to win that if, it's, if it's Boston against a team like Montreal, I'm taking. I'm take, I was. I will still take Rask over Price. Yeah. I know what Price did in the Olympics, but Rask had a better Olympics. Look at the de- defense in front of Carey Price in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He faced what? Like an average of what? Fifteen shots. What do you mean, Canada's actual offense? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Uh, all right. I've got mine. Uh, East. Okay. I'm gonna go. This is gonna, this is gonna be brutal. I'm gonna take Montreal. Oh. I'm not a Hab fan at all, but I just have a weird feeling. Uh, okay, I'm, that's fine. I'm gonna. I go, don't. I don't agree with you at all. But continue. I know you don't agree with me, but that's fine. I'm gonna go Montreal and Pittsburgh um, for the East. Okay. God, for that. the West, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> so, and it's not even. It's not even Montreal. I don't care. Like, well, I care, but like the worst thing about Montreal is the fans. Although I mean, they did give me a, a Toronto fan. So. Give, me a, give me a break, Montreal fans. 
I know you've won the most cups in NHL history. You don't have to tell me that every single time you win a hockey game. Sorry. All right. Um, so much in this podcast, Brad. Wow. Well, <laughs> uh, in the West, I'm going to go... I hate to do this, but I'm going to go St. Louis and San Jose. Okay. They're all there. I just, I don't know, San Jose is always a bust in the playoffs, but I'm going to I'm gonna go out on a whim and take them. I actually think the finals, to be honest, is going to be Pittsburgh and San Jose. Ooh, so not St. Louis. Not St. Louis. Okay. I, like, I think they have an amazing chance, but I think, uh, I don't know, it's, some flukes are going to happen and it's going to be San Jose. Are, right, we, are we throwing out Stanley Cup predictions now? I, I don't know. I think that's where we're going right now at this point. <laughs> I'm, blues, I'm, I'm, I'm blues like, Penguins, Blues in six. Chicago, Pittsburgh in six for Chicago. I'll take San Jose and Pittsburgh, and I'm going to take San Jose in five. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> um, I we really got to end. Yeah. Um, okay. So that wraps up the NHL season. We're going to wrap up our podcast with the uh, high fives and face palms for, I guess, the past two weeks since the last one we did. See you again, Sean? That's how you do a transition. Um, <laughs> I'm going to live that down, am I? No, you're not, because it was awful. Uh, does anyone want to start, or do I, or can I kick it off? with? I'll, a, I'll uh, start, because I think I have to redeem myself after my terrible transition into uh, the NHL trade uh, deadline. Okay. Um, I'm going to send me off my face palm for the week, because okay. I always start off positive and then negatively, so I'm going to trade, uh, switch it over. So my face palm for the week is Brian Colangelo coming out and admitting the Raptors, <laughs> <laughs> the Raptors were tanking and then doing a terrible job. At, well, he didn't say that they did a terrible job tanking, but they did a terrible job tanking. Because when you were, you know, you finish up an eight and ninth, that's not tanking. That's treading water. So my fail goes to the Raptors and well, I guess more Brian Colangelo for trying to tank and completely failing at doing it. Um, and this is going to be homerish for my high five for the week in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers no. uniforms. No. Yeah, yeah, I don't care. No. I don't care. I didn't like it to begin with. kind of looks like, don't get me wrong, I'm not a huge fan of the numbers, except for the fact that they glow in the dark. Yeah, it's an alarm clock. It doesn't matter. They glow in the dark. Yeah, it's, it's an alarm matter. clock. Like, like, who cares, though? Like, what, what, what does glow in the dark numbers have to deal with playing football? It's just awesome. Well, but you're never going to see it glow What's in the, the dark. Night games? Uh, with big bright lights? You shut your mouth. Um, I get, so, okay, so... I just, the, I, know, the, I just like the new... No, 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 no. The, the Buccaneers are going to have chrome face masks yep. and glow-in-the-dark numbers. Or glow, or, or chrome... Ducks. Is it, or the chrome light-up or whatever numbers. It's just, you know what? They, they could go undefeated because the opposing team won't be able to see anything. If it works, then uh, if they go undefeated, you, you owe me a steak dinner. No. <laughs> All right, I'll, just, I'll do that. And if and if they lose three games this season, you owe me a steak dinner. No. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying if they go undefeated, I'll give you the steak dinner. I'm saying you got to lose three games. Come on, that's three games, Sean. That's that's three game wiggle room for you. They could lose two, and you you'd still be in the clear. Give me four games. <laughs> All right, if they have and I'll, to lose, and I'll cook you the steak dinner. I'm not buying you steak. So dinner. They go twelve and four. <laughs> that's that's legit. I have faith. I never win these. Oh my god! Though. All right, I'm, I'm, Sean has I'm, Sean has the Buccaneers going twelve and four at least four. this year. Well, I'm drafting Johnny Mazel. <laughs> oh god! Um, if uh, Tim Bay uh, drafts the Johnny Manziel, you will not hear the end of it from me. Oh, I know I won't. And you know what? You didn't even like Johnny Manziel until I told you to watch that. Uh, I like Johnny was, Manziel. Oh, no. You were, you were like, oh, you were like, ah, oh, he's not that impressive. And then you watched the game against Duke. Oh, you're the, crazy, sir. You're crazy. Oh, no. I remember you saying, I oh, remember. There's no proof of this. I had nothing else to do New Year's Eve. I could look up the text messages. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I said I watched the game. I was impressed by him. Yeah, and I was, you said that was one of the first times you ever watched a full game of him. Yeah, a full game. Not like I've seen snippets and everything. I've never like sat down because I'm not a big NCAA guy. I usually just watch a lot of like game footage like after online on YouTube. And then you weren't sold on him until you watched that game. Oh yeah, like, yeah. And then he's he he's a winner. <laughs> <laughs> You're the worst, um, Josh. You can go. You can go. Yeah. Keep, uh, keep I guess from going talking. with Sean's trend. I'll stick with the face palm first. Face palm per yeah. Face palm first. 
Uh, I'm going to go with the Toronto Maple Leafs lackluster defense for the last couple games since the Olympic break. Uh, for instance, watching the game tonight, um, seeing defensemen from Columbus walk right in and basically guys, you know, just standing there watching him, giving him open space to shoot. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, that just distracted the shit out yeah, of me. Hater, yeah, haters are going to hate Haters are going to hate Brett. Why don't uh, you just say that out loud? <laughs> because Josh was in the middle of explaining something. <laughs> well, no, 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 he interrupted it anyway. He's just anyway, anyways, both of you shut up. This is God. My Off the rails. This is my time. <laughs> Face palm, trauma, Maple Leafs defense. You guys shit the bed. Um, my high five is going to go to LeBron James, who put up 61 points tonight uh, against the Charlotte Bobcats. Wait, he put up 61 new, points tonight? Yep. Set a new record for the Miami Heat for points nice. in a single game. Um, you know, so I guess another half face palm goes to the Charlotte Bobcats for letting LeBron James drop a dookie on you while he's got a face mask on. But um, big ups to LeBron for putting up 61 points. And off the board, Oscars last night, uh, Jared Leto's speech. Nothing to do with sports, but high five for him as well. Also, can I throw him about there about LeBron James? That black face mask, awesome. No, yeah, no, he, no, he no the, it wasn't he, black. It was he wore the clear one, right? Yeah, it was the clear one. No, I mean, like, when he was wearing it, that thing was awesome. Sean, I'm just going to tell you, just because it's clear and he's black doesn't mean it's a black face mask. <laughs> I hate you. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, wait. Funny, okay. Back back to Le- back to the sixty one points. Didn't the Bobcats give up sixty one to Carmelo too? Uh, Carmelo put up sixty two for the season high. So, but that but that was against the Bobcats, right? Uh, yeah. Come on, Charlotte, step your game up. They they that's a, that's a face palm of their own right there. Yeah. The two highest scoring games of the season. Anyways, um, I guess I'll I'll start off with well, I'll, I'll keep up with the trend face palm to uh, Jake Peavy, uh, for another. In the long line of freak spring training uh, injuries, when he cut his finger, almost cut his finger off on his non-throwing hand, um, he was trying to cut some, cut like a piece of string or a piece of rope or something, and he ended up, it gave, he cut it, and then he ended up almost cutting off his left index finger. So, learn how to use a knife, Jake Peavy. You're, it's a fishing knife. Presumably, you've been fishing before. Learn how to use a knife properly. Don't make us give you the, you know, the, that that Simpsons book, you know, the Johnny don't, Johnny does, Johnny don't, whatever that book was from the the, the Boy Scouts episode. Um, anyways, my win of the week is going to be uh, the Wichita State Shockers of the Missouri Valley Conference for completing an undefeated NCAA basketball season. Uh, it's been, it was the, it's the most wins in the season be based on because the season is now longer it's been extended so kudos to them for going undefeated uh personally i think they should be a number one seed uh mainly because you know what they are undefeated and if you haven't lost the game i think you deserve to be on the top line of the bracket no there'll be a third there'll be a third oh i'm not saying they will be but i think they should be I don't care if you're i don't it's not their fault that they play in the MV, the, the missouri valley conference <laughs> Pardon? It's one of the worst divisions, yeah. It's not their fault. They 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 beat everyone that's fate, that's come before them. I think that they are talented. I think they deserve a number one seed, but I agree with you. They probably will not get it because of the conference they're playing. Yeah. Also, uh, shout out to Ottawa, the Ottawa GGs for knocking off the dynasty that is Carl, the Carlton Ravens in CIS basketball. <laughs> Just saying. Okay. No. Okay. No one's gonna say anything to that. Okay. <laughs> so let's so so Hey, Carlton has. I'm not insulting. Beat... I just don't know anything about it. Okay. Just saying, Carlton put up a good fight against Syracuse this year and a beat a beat Wisconsin as well. So they're 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 legit. Um. I guess that wraps it up. Uh, Josh, I guess you and I are the only ones really caring it, uh, in this podcast right now about March Madness because I... I don't think Sean gives two shits. Yeah. No. That would be correct. Sure. Yes. So um, I look forward to it. Selection Sundays in two weeks. So that should be fun. Yeah. Are we doing, um, are we doing any kind of uh, board for this? I think we should. I think we should do a. Uh, set up a little, we'll set up a little. Uh, little fantasy pick board there. Yeah, yeah. I'm and fine even with you that. can do it, Sean. You can pick it based on you know which uniforms you think are the best. That's what I plan on doing. 
So you know they're going to be dinner on it. So uh, <laughs> that's two to three. I, I get. I bet you can guarantee Oregon will be in the final because of the uniforms. So. Oh, I see what you did there. Yeah. Quack quack. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. That's coming up. So. You still working on the draft previews, Josh? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was I was in the hospital this past weekend. And I, was, oh, I was all man. messed up, so um, now I am back. So I will uh, I'll get on that and do that for you. Well, you, you know when you're healthy. Oh, I'm um, healthy now. I, okay. I had a couple Mars bars. I was okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, and Sean, you, we, we already talked about you got the defensive preview coming up, and then the and mock draft. Mock draft, draft you're constantly Tampa, working on. Because I'm going on vacation, going to go to the Buck Stadium. Be exciting. Yeah. Are going to buy a new jersey? Uh, they go on sale. I saw April first, so that sucked. I wanted to buy. Oh, so this this could just be a joke. Uh, that would be terrible if it was. So I, uh, I would be happy because they're terrible. You're terrible. Um, I, see, the messed up thing is Sean would be the first guy to buy the jersey, <laughs> go into his bedroom, look at a mirror, and shut all the lights off at 3 o'clock <laughs> see if the numbers glow. I didn't okay. think about that, but that's the first thing we're going to do now. It'd be on Facebook in a matter of minutes. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Facebook Hashtag selfie. Hashtag selfie. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Um, I've got nothing coming down, so there you go. Glad I could help you guys produce content for our website. Um, anyways, that's about it. Uh, Sean is at Sean underscore McD2. The number two, not T-O. Uh, Josh, you're what? Spad, at Spads underscore DJ? Or JD? Uh, or, S- I was at close. Spads DJ. Uh, oh, I was close. There's no underscore. DJ. Yeah. Spads underscore. Spads DJ. No underscore. Yeah, no underscore. Spads DJ. I'm at, I'm at SmithBR10. We are at Sport by Schmucks because of character restrictions. Uh, website is blogspot, sportsbyschmucks.blogspot.ca. Um, so always, you know, take a look for there for contact uh, for content. Follow us on Twitter because you'll see when we post articles then. And then uh, like us and subscribe to us on Facebook so you can get our next podcast, which will come out hopefully soon. So everyone, thank you for listening and uh, stay safe out there, kids.